Steve Kornacki breaking it down last night. And uh, the Rams all of a sudden have to worry about missing the playoffs altogether. One of the teams that was in that weird weekly rotation of best team in the NFC, it goes from the Saints to the Buccaneers to the Packers to the Rams to the Seahawks. And at one point it was the Rams. Great defense, great running game, good enough to disguise the flaws or at least hide, minimize, look the other way, pay no attention to the man behind the curtain, flaws of Jared Goff. It looked like they had it going. Now, after losing to the Jets, I thought they'd follow it up by figuring out what they need to do and beating the Seahawks, a team they typically do well against, Chris. Didn't happen. And the Rams in serious trouble. I still think they're going to make it because I don't think the Bears are going to beat the Packers since the Packers are still playing for the top seed. Yeah. But uh, they, they at least have to spend the week worrying about not making it, which is something we didn't expect they would be doing at this stage of the season. Yeah, no, definitely. And I mean, that's, that's not a given, of course, with Green Bay going to Chicago. Chicago's kind of got their mojo going either way. But, you know, the Rams are the opposite of that. I mean, they, they do have no mojo going right now. They lost three out of the last five. And, you know, they all, all games have similar qualities that just leave a bad taste in your mouth. You know, unimpressive offense, bad mistakes by Jared Goff, and inconsistent play from him at the quarterback position. I know he showed great toughness yesterday, hurting his thumb. I give him a lot of credit for that. I know he's tough. I know he's a good guy, a good human. Um, but, you know, some of the stuff we see at quarterback, yeah, well, there's there's issues there. You know, it was, hey, it was a tough, it was going to be a tough defensive struggle football game yesterday, right? That's the way it was going to be. It was 6-3, and the Rams were winning, and they were winning that battle of we're going to play field goals and defensive football, no problem. It's 6-3. They're driving the football. They're in field goal range. And he decides to throw the ball across his body to a guy who's covered and behind him and try to make some circus-type throw that, you know, is just – I wouldn't advise Patrick Mahomes, who makes those throws routinely, to do. And that really changed the football game. You know, they had a chance to really kind of grab the, the bull by the horns there and instead – they gave the Seahawks a little life, who were reeling a little at that point. Russell Wilson goes down and kicks a field goal, makes it 6-6, and really the game was never the same from that point on. The The Seahawks kind of controlled the, the, the flow of the football game from there on out, and we'll see with the Rams. There's definitely concern with that offense and how they look here down the stretch. We have all concluded, and I think the Eagles, well, have agreed by virtue of the fact that they benched Carson Wentz, that they should not have given him a gigantic contract extension after only three seasons, and now it's time to have that conversation about Jared Goff. Did the Rams get it wrong when they did the same thing? And the point I made last night on Twitter, and I'm going to write about this today at PFT, Chris, 2015, Jameis Winston, first pick, Marcus Mariota, second pick. Their teams never seriously considered extending them. They played five years each. They got their fifth-year option, that big balloon payment that you get in year five, and then they walked away. And the next year, Goff and Wentz, after only three seasons each, get gigantic contracts. And the Eagles clearly regret it. And the Rams, if you applied Sean McVay to a lie detector machine or injected sodium pentothal into his veins, would say, <laughs> I regret it. How can they not regret it, Chris? I, I, I know. I, I don't know. You know, it's, it, they, they, they traded up in the draft to get their quarterbacks. Jared Goff went to a Super Bowl. Carson Wentz played at an MVP caliber, you know, level for just about a full season. And of course the team went on to win a Super Bowl and they fell in that trap of, you know, yeah. Okay. We got to sign it. He's the face of our franchise. These are the, our guys. And of course with what they did to trade up in the draft, yeah, they put themselves in a corner that way. You know, the difference being though, the Rams barely have had backup quarterbacks there to threaten Jared Goff where the Eagles have had somebody competent behind him. And that's going to be the big thing this week. Can Jared Goff play? I mean, that offense isn't that great with Jared Goff in it. I don't know about what it's going to look like with their backup quarterback. I mean, that, that's going to be interesting to see and maybe the biggest game of the year for this football team. And can they beat Kyler Murray in them, you know, with a less than Jared Goff or no Jared Goff? Ooh, we'll see. And here's where it stands. Jared Goff had that dislocated thumb yesterday. He popped it back in. He kept going. You can see he was in pain. He was in discomfort. He said after the game he's uncertain that he'll be able to play. 
I've confirmed that there is indeed a fracture in the thumb. They're going to evaluate it more today to decide what he can and can't do. He's adamant about playing, reportedly. Of course he is. Every 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 professional athlete is adamant about playing. The question is, can he physically do it? And this is the analysis we went through not long ago. It's It's not very high level, but it should be easy to understand. What percentage are you willing to tolerate from your starter below 100 before you turn to a fully healthy backup? In New Orleans, X percent Drew Brees, one over 100 percent Taysom Hill. In L.A., what percent Jared Goff is going to win over 100 percent John Walford? All due respect, John Walford. Anybody who even plays uh, pays uh, the, the, the closest attention to the game. Hey, who's John Walford? He played in the AAF. He's never thrown a pass in a regular season NFL game. And here's the, here's the, the where, where it gets dicey for Goff. If Walford actually plays fairly well, that's only going to increase the chatter that maybe Goff's not the guy, that Sean McVay's the guy. Sean McVay's the reason. If Walford plays well, you're going to hear. And the media machine, this, this, this bizarre pro McVay media machine, Chris, that's out there, and they know who they are. They're already hyping Walford as a guy who's going to come in and play well because he's hitched to McVay. Well, I mean, I'm sure it's easy to do that. You know, McVay's pretty damn good when he's been with the Rams. Quarterback play has been pretty damn good. And, you know, Jared Goff, we know, is not that special. He went to the Super Bowl with a quarterback that. I don't know if anybody in their right mind would say is in the top 20 quarterbacks in football. So, yeah, there's a chance. And that's where the Rams misevaluated, just on your point, in my opinion. I mean, you know, again, it's, it's, it's not that hard to run bootlegs and play actions and screens. You could, there are a lot of quarterbacks in football that could run that Rams offense, a lot of them. And then they could have used maybe that extra $15, $20 million for another offensive lineman or another defensive lineman next to Aaron Donald, and they could be more dominant. I don't know. Somebody's going to do this here soon, like we've talked about at the quarterback position, where they just go, wait, it's not really that special. He's throwing four-yard passes, and he's throwing it. We could have got Johnny from high school to do that, so let's not give him a piece of the franchise to be their quarterback. Somebody will do it, but either way, the Rams are reeling. As good as their defense is playing right now, uh, the fact that they just can't put up points on the offensive side of the ball, that is concerning. And that goes on more than Jared Goff. That's McVeigh too. You know, it's Strugglesville right there right now. It's not a lot of yards per play, and uh, they haven't dominated the line of scrimmage, and they just seem off kilter altogether here the last few weeks. Do, do we give any credence to the argument, Chris, that we made last year when the Colts signed Phillip Rivers that they needed to give him that $25 million contract? It's kind of like the lawyer has to drive a Cadillac. You have to have a certain cachet. You have to have that swag in the locker room that so you can lead. Sure. The idea that you have to show conviction and confidence in your quarterback and you give him that contract, it's good for his ego. It's good for his confidence. It's good for his ability to lead in the locker room. Uh, are you buying that as well, a reason for paying guys like Goff and Wentz? Now with Wentz, Wentz, they, it just it it just it just went away. Yeah, he he had it and it's gone. Right. With Goff, you could argue it was never really. There. Well, I just think teams have gone overboard on it. Like I I just I think like if the quarterback was making twenty million dollars a year, everybody in the locker room would still go, "That's the man. He's making a lot more than all of us." Like, but we've made <laughs> it like where we're like, "Hey, he's part of the owner of the team." Him and the owner talk. They don't. He doesn't really talk. They put quarterbacks in a different stratosphere with what they pay. Hey, you're worth our whole offensive line. You're worth all of them and more. Like what? That's where it's gone. That's where it has to change, in my opinion. And you know, I'll bring this up. We talk about that, like to your point, because Mike, you're. It's a real point. You're right. That I think there's a lot of thinking in the NFL that way. But I would also say, like. I think the Colts and that team would look at Phillip Rivers the same way as they do right now if he was making $18 million. And I think the Patriots players really respect Cam Newton, and he's making peanuts. So it just shows you if you could act the right way and be a true leader and be accountable and all that, guys will still think you're the man whether you're making 7 10 15 20 It doesn't matter. Cam Newton's on pace to make three point seven right. million for his one season with the Patriots. Jared Goff's making thirty three and a half million per year. Whoa. And 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 you know you know what? If if you told me I had thirty three and a half million to spend and I could only spend it on one guy, 
Goff, or McVay. I'm spending it on McVay, Definitely. not Goff. Definitely. And that that's another point, too. Coach, coach, Great coaches don't get paid nearly what they're worth because McVay's more important to that team than Goff is. McVay's the one who should be making $33.5 million, if anyone is between the two of them. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.